Hello, welcome back to another Test and Tune video. Today we're going to have a crack at trying to get the Snap-on 60 amp battery charger outputting the correct output. So hopefully you've seen the first video where we fixed the power switch. Um, and I guess just to quickly reiterate, uh, I was given this charger in a non-working state. Didn't know why it wasn't working, but we could see there was something going on with the switch. I managed to put the switch back together. It doesn't have its timer functionality. Um, it no longer ticks, but we can turn on and off, which is enough for what I wanted to do with it. Um, however, when we put it onto a car, it doesn't output anywhere close to 60 amps. In fact, the most I could get out of it, I think, was 15. We'll play a little clip now. 12.4. 8 amps, I'll just go back up to max. So it's putting a few more amps in, but definitely not enough to do any coding work on this car. Yeah, so it was around that 15 amps, and unfortunately, I didn't really catch on to what was going on in that last video. However, after I edited the video, I put some thought into it, and I realized that there might have been an issue with the diode. So basically these old school battery chargers, they are just a giant transformer. So we have 240 volt that comes in. It's actually got a couple of coils in the transformer and that's how it does the six or 12 volt output. Um, I assume it does six on one wire, then 12 volt low on the next, and then it basically must just run all the coils together to give it its full 60 amp output. I think, I assume that's how it works. Anyway, AC 240 comes in, 12 or 6 volts comes out here, but it's still AC. And this little board, this metal piece, it actually held or housed the diode boxes. Boxes? That's not the right word. Diode packs. And you can see here, this one has actually melted and one of the arms had gone off. Now, I did film a little clip when I pulled all this apart, but unfortunately I managed to delete it, like the old man that I am. Um, but you can actually see here, each diode... Uh, I can't remember the proper name for these diodes, they do have a proper name, but they're supposed to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten button diodes on each. I'm going to call it a pack. We'll call it a pack of diodes. So they all sit here all the way around, and it basically it'll convert the AC to DC current in the way that a diode does. Now, basically what was happening, we were missing about one third of the diode. So this one had actually melted and fallen off, and I guess, because this thing does vibrate quite a lot, they've just fallen out over time. And that's why we're not getting the full amount of DC current coming out of this thing. So, what do you do? You go online and you find out what you can buy to fix these diodes. Now these button diodes are a pretty old school thing. Keep in mind this battery charger is probably 20 years old. Um, and I couldn't find any of these in the country at all. Uh, my original plan was basically recut that out of a piece of tin and then hopefully just get it all working with the original ones. Couldn't work. Well, couldn't find the parts. So what I ended up getting, uh, and I got it from eBay, were these new style of diodes and everything's losing my mind at the moment. I can't remember what these are actually called. I'll put the name of them down below. In fact, I'll put a link and I'll put a link to the eBay ad as well because it's much smaller than I thought it was. This is supposed to handle 50 amps. Now, if you look at that in my hand, how is that supposed to handle 50 amps of current through that little thing? Anyway, this is what people are using to repair these old school battery chargers now. So I'm going to fit it in and we'll see if we can get this thing outputting its original 60 amps like it's supposed to. Fingers crossed, let's see how we go. Okay, so I've got a bit of a plan on how I'm gonna wire these lovely little diodes in, and they're so small. The only um, bolts I have that are small enough to go through the actual terminal on the diode are these little Allen key bolts. Um, hopefully the GoPro can even see, but yeah, it's, it's very, very small stuff. And I've gotta use a series of washers to space it up so that it'll actually connect to the wire coming off the transformer. But I know it's gonna work, because if you have a look inside, I've done the other side already. Um, but basically, all I've done, if anyone else is repairing their snap-on charger and they're going to follow this, assuming it works, of course, uh, you can buy these from eBay, remove the original diode packs, slide this through one of the many holes in this... Oh, dropped it. I might put it on that one. No, oh, no, that hole there. One of the many holes in this little plate, and we'll bolt it in loosely first. The way it works, the diodes will only allow current to flow in one direction. One of my favorite bands, not. Um, in fact, let me just spin it around, I'll show you guys. See there, it's got an angle, so the current can only flow that way. So you've got AC current coming in this side, and it's gonna convert it into DC coming out that way, which is all we need. Okay, now I need to angle that round so that it sort of joins up with this one. Perfect. Again, we'll tighten them once everything's on. 
Now, because of this terribly small hole in the diode, so we have that. Then we go one washer to space up to the big washer. If I can get it in there. Then we go to a big washer. Then the wire can go on like so. Then another washer. Then another washer. And then a very small nut. All right. Now I'll get that clamp down and should be good to test. All right, it's moment of truth. Uh, the ignition's on, and I'm trying to just lower the battery a little bit. So you can see the car is currently sitting at 11.99 volts. Uh, interestingly, with the amp meter here, it appears that the charger is drawing current out of the car. So that's something I need to look into because that shouldn't be pulling current out. But let's turn it on. We'll see what happens. Obviously, it's very dangerous because everything is exposed, but just for science's sake, we'll put it back down to medium and see if we get any better amperage. Jesus, so it's on low and it's nearly doing, it's about 15 amps. So low now is pumping the power in. Holy crap, what's the voltage gone up to? 12.2, okay. We'll go to medium. What's that? Medium is now 20 amps, 12.5 volts, and we'll go right up to high, over 40 amps. Woo! 35 amps on this scale. Guys, obviously the battery's gonna fill up pretty quick, but we fixed the snap-on charger. So it was the power switch and the dodgy diodes. And I've got to, oh no, it's, it still makes a lot of vibration noise, but it's not vibrating as bad as it was. So I think a lot of the vibration noise was actually these broken diode modules. That's mega. I'm so happy I fixed this charger. If you've been following our main channel, Zero to 60, um, I'll put a link to that. I actually made a mega power supply. I should turn those angel eyes off. They're off. Yeah, I made a massive power supply, 140 amp power supply out of a Dell server power supply. That was, that was a tongue twister. Um, I'll put a link to that up in the corner. Um, but yeah, there's just something about the real snap-on one. I kind of like it. And there she is pumping out 30 amps. It still vibrates. <laughs> it's just the way these transformers work. But it's definitely quieter than it was, which is good. Back to medium. Still shows nearly 20 amps, 15 on this thing. I'd say this is probably more accurate than the old school thing that's on the charger. 13.5 volts. We'll go back up to high. 13.8 volts, which is what it's supposed to do at high. And 26 amps. I'm happy, I'm happy. These things were, I think 10 or 20 bucks. The diodes, let's turn it off. It's, it's loud. Um, not too bad. Oh, one thing I should probably do is see if it's getting warm. That is one thing because they are so small. So we'll put that back on. She's still on high. What? So it looks like the diodes are sitting at about, it's hard to get a, a matte surface. Probably 30 degrees. I guess one thing with the way that this is set up, the diodes are essentially bolted to a big heat sink that's got a fan blowing on it. So whatever heat builds up in them, which it might not be too bad, there's gonna be, like right now, you've got the two of them running. You're talking 25 amps. So there's only like 15 amps, 12 and a half amps going through them. And only 30 amps at absolute peak current draw. So yeah, maybe they're not too small. But they work anyway. That is brilliant. Guys, I'll turn it off. I'm gonna bolt it back together. The only thing I'm gonna do different in this one, I might see if I can add some nylon washers to the body and just try and stop the vibration. Then again, it's definitely not vibrating like it was. That is so much quieter than it was. That is amazing. Woo!
All right, let me bolt it back together and that'll end the video off. Okay, I have found one hot spot and it's something I haven't even touched. It's this wire right here. Um, yeah, that, that was actually 70 when I just checked it before. It's cooled down now already. Oh, but she is warm. So here, maybe I should pull that apart. Yeah, the diodes, they're cool. No heat in the diodes at all, but this is warm. This shouldn't be warm. Hmm, I wonder if there's corrosion and it's just not connecting like it should. Might just pull it apart and check it. All right, so I've started digging into why this is getting hot and we've got some serious corrosion in here. Um, yeah, bloody hell. I'm gonna have to just, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna trim back a bit. Although I've just put a massive uh, splinter in my finger. I'm gonna trim back and just see if we can get to some clean cable. Um, and just see if we can shorten it somehow. Okay, so I've redone that wire. Basically, I've just trimmed it back and it's in the bin now. And then I've recrimped that terminal, but we found some clean part of the copper and it's definitely a better connection. Um, the volts we're getting at the car now is it's significantly gone up. We're now getting 14.7 at the car and she's pumping out 36 amps. Wow. All right, this thing has got some power. That rusty connection was actually slowing it down a fair bit. So even on the minimum now, we're now putting out 17 amps at 13.5 volts. Woo! This is what I remember this charger to be. It's interesting how it jumps around to 40 amps on that gauge. And oh, it's 40 amps here as well. Wow, 14.7 volts. Obviously the increased voltage gets more amps through. I think that's how it works. That's how a transformer works. Yeah. All right, guys. Shit, 15.1 volts. 32 amps, that's with the car off. Could probably turn that down. 14.3. Yeah, you probably wouldn't want to charge a car. I mean, it's 15 volts. These things will take 15 volts. Medium. Look at that, 38 volts. All right, actually, you know what, I'm gonna run it for a few minutes. I'll put it back together. I'll run it for a few minutes with the case off and we'll just make sure we're not getting any heat anywhere again. All right, so it's been running for a little while. Um, I've actually turned it down. Uh, it's lucky I had the voltmeter on it just to check what was going on. You can see we're at 13.48 volts and we're putting out 18 amps, 19 amps, and it's on its low setting. So this thing, now it's actually got a good connection everywhere. It is crazy powerful. Man, it is kind of scary. Uh, I'm gonna watch the volts. I'll put it onto medium. So volts are up to 14, amps are up to 26, 14.2 volts, 14.3. Now the car is actually on as well. So I've got all the accessories running. I'm trying to use as much power up as we can. And it's putting in 25 amps continually. 14.3 there. And I saw 15 when I go to high, so I'll switch it off quickly, but 15, yeah, 15.4, that's enough. Yeah, so you can't just leave this thing on high. You cannot leave this on high. In fact, I'm gonna put it back on low while I'm filming a little bit to camera. 13.6 volts, 17 and a half amps pumping in. Let's turn the car off. No errors, no errors. Well, no new ones. Um, yeah, 15 amps on low. 13.8 volts. It is moving some current and cold to touch. Much better, much better. That is good. In fact, 24 degrees. It's, you can't really get the, um, around 30 degrees around the plate at the bottom. Yeah, this actually, the fan design works perfect for cooling. Nothing's getting hot. I like it. Something that I did notice, the, let me just switch it off. The, somebody has bypassed the circuit overload um, protection, which probably not great, but it's kind of concerning that it'll go up to 15 volts. I do wonder if it's got a maximum voltage. 
Uh, just as, it says it does say 60 amps at 14.7 volts. Whoa. She's a beast. Now it's working. It's a beast. Right, I fixed the snap-on charger, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to use it anymore, but I'm definitely going to keep it. That is really cool. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, the takeaway is the common thing that breaks on these to stop them actually working completely is these rotary switches, which you can just put back together and remove the timer part. Um, and the diodes is what stops them from pumping out the correct amount of current, or the correct amount of voltage for that matter. And you can replace them with some cheap eBay ones, which I'll put a link to below. Thank you for watching. I'm going to end off there because it's probably long enough. Um, yeah, pretty happy right now. Thank you very much. Catch you on the next one.